Welcome to this week's edition of Kiwi Bread, an in-depth look at the New Zealand thoroughbred breeding industry. This week we take a trip to Waikato Stud to see resident sire O'Reilly. I spoke to Mark Chittick about the dominance of his progeny on the racetrack last season, giving him a clean sweep of the New Zealand Stallion Awards. Shot at Achiever started to come home hard. Shot at Achiever's race to Rangi Rangdu. Shot at Achiever put ahead in front of Rangi Rangdu. Solzhenitsyn flying home late, but Shot at Achiever, the first man ever to win it. Here's Sham Express from the bank and Aeronautical on the far side. Moment of change the leader from Aeronautical. Sham Express starting to flash home on the outside. Moment of change, Aeronautical. Sham Express, the three year old mows them down last stride. He's got there. Dozina in front, Piero and Sacred Falls, and then Streamer out in the centre. Here's a great finish, Sacred Falls and Piero. Settle down to fight it out, the three-year-old, but Sacred Falls. Sacred Falls beat Piero. Well, congratulations, Mark. A phenomenal season for O'Reilly, notching up 68 stakes winners, 15 of them just from last season alone, giving him an unprecedented clean sweep of New Zealand's major stallion awards, even by, by Caddo's standards. That must feel pretty good. Yeah, it certainly does. The first horse ever to do it, and it, you're right. It has been um, it has been an amazing year for him to be standing a, a horse like um, O'Reilly and to have him involved in our in our operation right right from right from day one. Um, obviously, uh, um, he is the epitome of of, um, of a thoroughbred stallion, and he has had a wonderful year. O'Reilly's amassed $11.5 million in progeny earnings thanks to the likes of Sham Express, Sacred Falls and Silent Achiever last season. Of all their performances, Mark, which is your proudest? Well, I think probably the highlight for me that is, is um, his Colts, his sons winning the, the new market handicap in the Doncaster and Sham Express and Sacred Falls. Uh, they are two of Australia's coveted races, and um, so to pick those up by New Zealand breeds and certainly two sons of O'Reilly, it's a, it's a huge achievement. You just mentioned the Doncaster. Sacred Falls win in that was nothing short of brilliant. What's O'Reilly passing on to his progeny that's proving so superior? The, the biggest attribute is the, is the speed that he passes on. He, he had an immense speed himself um, in winning the, those of us that can remember him winning the Telegraph. He, he showed a massive turn of foot against the older horses and, and won brilliantly. But So he does pass on that speed. But I think one of the things that... Um, that uh, probably stands them in very good stead and, and, and is proof in the pudding that they race all over the world in, in um, different situations like Hong Kong, Singapore, etc. Um, they do mainly have, you know, they have, on the whole, have very good temperaments. O'Reilly was retired to stud in 1997. Why has he been such a special sire for Waikato Stud? Well, I think when we bought Waikato Stud uh, 20 odd years ago, um, he was a foal at the time. and. And uh, we've been through our ups and downs with him. He didn't make the yearling sales. Um, uh, he he injured himself as a two-year-old. We looked as though it looked as though we weren't going to get him to the racetrack at all. So to, to get him back as a finally as a three-year-old, um, 12 months later, and for him to be New Zealand Horse of the Year um, in just one season and four starts in New Zealand um, was certainly the highs. And of course, then he broke down in um, in uh, the new market in in uh, Melbourne. And uh, so that was another low. Um, so um, we were always going to stand the, the horse at stud, um, e even if he hadn't made the racetrack, because he was such a good-looking horse, horse with such a good pedigree. Uh, so for him to show his ability on on the on the track was um, was obviously fantastic. And then um, as soon as he got that, he had a reasonable year as two-year-olds. Um, and but then once they turned three, and he got his first Group One winner. And, in the jewel and then and then the thousand guineas the next year in final destination and we we knew that we we're on on track um, um standing at standing a top stallion well obviously he's been part of the business and uh, and and obviously um waikato studs shown huge growth over the last um over those last 20 years and um a, a lot of it uh we just couldn't have done it without o'reilly He's still a magnificent looking stallion. How's he holding up physically at this stage of his career? Yeah, unbelievably well really. Um, and going back to when he first came to stud, uh, I think we were standing at five or six stallions at the time and if we if we showed him first, um, the people looking didn't want to see any of the others and if we showed him last, they didn't remember any of the others. And he's still a little bit like that now um, and uh, even as he gets older, he's, he's, he's a magnificent specimen. You know, he's, he's a big, impressive, imposing horse. He stands for sixty thousand dollars. How did you establish his service fee? Well, certainly last year we were a bit lower than that, and um, 
he is he is getting a bit older now, and, and, we're, and we're wanting to protect his numbers. We're wanting to we're wanting to look after him as long as we possibly can. Um, and uh, he was a little bit lower than, than than what he is this year. And we served quite a big book with him last year. And on the back of the results that he's had this year, and with him getting older, um, and it is our policy to to be looking after him as best we can for the next few years. Um, so that's why service fee, fee went up and uh, we'll, be, we'll be limiting this book this year. What sort of numbers are we talking and, and what kind of book will he serve? you be careful with those numbers because I know we talked numbers last year and they sort of got a little bit out of hand but uh, uh, but no we'd like to keep him at a bit, around about that 120. He looks really well the horse, he's extremely healthy, he's very he's very good in the breeding shed and it's not too hard on himself so he'll handle 120 extremely uh, easily um, and very well but we'd like to try and keep him to that. What's the next chapter now for O'Reilly? I, well, I think already, uh, obviously, um, uh, to secure those three um, awards is, is huge, and you, you can't do a whole lot more than that. But um, I think as a broodmare sire already, I mean, he's finished fourth on the on the broodmare sires list um, just the, with just this season, and um, and uh, left left multiple stakes winners out of his mares and Group One winners. So I, I think he'll make a fantastic broodmare sire. Um, it's it, it's. It probably makes sense. He is by Last Tycoon, who was a good broodmare sire. He's out of Pompeii Court Mare, who's a good broodmare sire. And, and it's a good female family that he's out of, so it probably does make sense. But certainly, um, the way things are going, he's going to make an incredibly good broodmare sire.